Hello to everyone. My name is Simon Podnar and I'm coming from University Medical Center Ljubljana, Slovenia. And the title of my presentation will be Anatomy and Scan Demo of the Ulnar Nerve. So the ulnar nerve arises from the medial cord C8 to D1 of the brachial plexus. Overlying clavicle obscures the view in this segment. Ulnar nerve then runs distally through the axilla, medial to the axillary artery and near the vein. It continues medial to the brachial artery as far as the midarm. You can see the position of the probe here proximal in the arm. And the structure here is the ulnar nerve. Here is the brachial artery and the, these are the veins uh, around. And this is also the anatomical picture of this position. In the midarm, ulnar nerve pierces the medial intermuscular septum and moves into the posterior compartment. Inclining medially, it descends anterior to the medial head of triceps to the interval between the medial epicondyle and the olecranium. So this is the position in the middle of the arm and you can see the ulnar nerve here. This is also shown and this is the triceps muscle. This is the superficial, this is the deep, deep part. So the ulnar nerve passes behind the medial epicondyle in a retrochondylar canal where it is easily palpable. At medial epicondyle in two centimeters proximal to it, ulnar nerve can be easily externally compressed. This is the most common site of the ulnar neuropathy at the elbow. So we are in position here. And so in, uh, usually we would measure the cross-sectional area at two centimeters proximal to the medial epicondyle. So let's talk about compression in the RTC group. So this is the arm, this is the proximal, and this is the distal part, and this is the medial epicondyle. And you can see that in this case, the cross-sectional area of the ulnar nerve was the biggest two centimeters proximal to the medial epicondyle. And in this segment between medial epicondyle and two centimeters proximal, the conduction velocity was also the lowest, which situate this, uh, the, the lesion to, to this area. So what are the characteristics of ulnar neuropathy at the elbow at this point? So it lies, as we said, at or two centimeters proximal to the medial epicondyle. It is more common. It occurs in uh, non-physical workers, in non-dominant arm. It is clinically less severe, so it's mainly demilinating, and it, you will never find nerve constriction uh, in this. So we think that uh, lesion here is caused by external compression. So at medial epicondyle, ulnar nerve lies next to the medial head of triceps, and occasionally below anconeus epitocrearis muscle. So this muscle would be seen here at this position. In, in this proportion of patients. So near the uh, elbow also rise two main muscular branches of the ulnar nerve that supply flexor carpi ulnaris and the medial half of the flexor digitorum profundus muscles. So this is the medial epicondyle, this is the triceps muscle and this is the ulnar nerve. And this is also the position where we typically measure the cross-sectional area of the nerve. Distal to the medial epicondyle, ulnar nerve runs to the cubital tunnel under the overlying arc with ligament, so-called humero ulnar aponeurosis, that is joining the two heads of flexocarpi ulnaris and entering the forearm. Cubital tunnel is the second most common site of ulnar neuropathy at the elbow, which is caused by entrapment under the humero ulnar aponeurosis. So uh, entrapment in this position, uh, you can see that here we can have the very thin nerve and uh, the thickening of the ulnar nerve proximal to this side. So this is one centimeter distal and the, the 
the level of entrapment is about 2 cm distal to the uh, medial epicondyle. And you can see at this position also that the, uh, the conduction velocity in motor fibers is just about 10 meters per second. So let's talk about characteristics of this distal lesion. So this is 2 or 3 cm distal to the medial epicondyle. It is less common. It occurs in older hard manual laborers and affects dominant arm. It is clinically more severe. It is uh, mainly axonal and you can find the constriction in more than half of, of uh, the, uh, these uh, arms. So then the ulnar nerve descends on the medial side of the forearm on flexor digitorum profundus. Proximally, it is covered by flexor carpi lunaris. Its distal half lies lateral to the muscle and is covered by only by skin and fascia. In the upper third of the forearm, the nerve is distant from the uh, ulnar artery, but more distally it comes close light to the medial side of the artery. So this is the position in the uh, mid of the forearm, and this is the ulnar nerve. It's here and the ulnar artery just beside it. So about 5 cm proximal to the wrist, ulnar nerve gives off the dorsal cutaneous branch. This branch then continues distally and dorsally deep to the flexor carpal nerves. Then at the wrist, the ulnar nerve passes under the superficial part of the flexor retinaculum in Guillaume's canal and divides into the superficial and deep branches. You can see an anatomical picture here, position of the probe here. And here is the PC form and the ulnar nerve and the ulnar artery is it's here. So here we see the ulnar nerve, so medial epicondyle is here and this is the ulnar nerve. So this is uh, the medial epicondyle. And now we move proximally. You see here on the right and the ulnar nerve is here in the middle. And we move proximally, proximally and comes near the veins and the artery, brachial artery. And then we go down again. You see the ulnar nerve in the middle. And we go down again and then we stop here and we can we can also measure at different points the cross-sectional area so usually we, you, we use trace technique but here you will see the utility of ellipse this measurement is faster but is sometimes not so accurate and now we move again distally towards the medial epicondyle. Now it's here, yes, you see on the right side of the medial epicondyle, the ulnar nerve. And we said that this is one of the, the most common positions of the, uh, of the uh, external compression. And you can see how inaccurate is actually this uh, ellipse technique, but as said is very, very fast. And now we move distally around the medial epicondyle. And again, we are there again. This is the triceps muscle seen. And these are the two heads of the flexor carpi ulnaris. And this is the place of the proximal part of the cubital, cubital tunnel. So measurement here again. So this is also the point where is the most practical to start uh, our uh, scanning session because here is the ulnar nerve, the easiest to identify. Also here, a bit more distal. You can see above flexor carpinaris, below is flexor digitorum profundus. And now the, uh, the, uh, the artery is coming to near, near the, the nerve. And it's also one of the positions where we often measure the cross-sectional area of the nerve. And now we move towards the wrist and we are now we see now it's coming uh, the, the, the dorsal branch now it's going out you see and 
it's uh, returning the, the okay and now we are just this at the wrist you see the pisiform bone you see the pulsing artery and you see the ulnar nerve below the artery just near the pisiform bone this is also the place where we often measure the cross-sectional area so it is also important to perform a longitudinal scan and uh, when we do the longitudinal scan we uh, must our patient must extend the elbow because otherwise of course it's not possible to do it and uh, even though it is sometimes quite difficult uh, to show the whole on the nerve uh, because of of uh, of the anatomical way how it goes here so you see quite a little distal to the medial epicondyle and now the nerve will will be shown in longitudinal so it's sometimes it's quite difficult okay see nicely now usually uh, the proximal is on the left and the distal is on the right this is the usual convention and then the last thing is to show displacement of the ulnar nerve now we see the ulnar nerve at the middle epicondyle deep down and now when the patient flexes the elbow the actually you see that the nerve jumps over so this is the complete dislocation of the ulnar nerve at the elbow see now it's in the physiological side and when it makes complete flexion it just jumps over okay and you can see that the nerve at this point is a bit bigger so this might point to, to slight uh, a problem at but we don't we don't have the description of patient symptoms so that is all thank you very much for your attention bye